So what do you do when you find something you want in the mountains? You blow a giant hole in it. <laughs> this is just a little kind of mining prospect here, but it uh, as you get closer, you can see it's, it's a lot bigger than it looks from back there. Um, probably just looks like a black hole from here, but let me... I don't want to get too close, but yeah, oh, it's right there, so... And then it goes in. Let's see, I don't know if you can see how big that is. That's the top up there. <clears throat> and that goes way down in there. So, pretty crazy. So if you look closely at the walls, you can see that these are volcanic rocks and they are rich in minerals like iron, magnesium, and manganese. They were probably doing some manganese mining here. So what is manganese? Manganese is the fifth most abundant metal in the Earth's crust. It's a brittle silvery metal, or as manganese oxide, it will appear black. It's often found in association with other metals like silver, gold, copper, zinc, lead, tin, tungsten, mercury, and even as an impurity with minerals like talc. Manganese ores and minerals are widely distributed. Two of the most common include pyrolusite, a manganese dioxide, and rhodochrosite, a manganese carbonate. And there are some other interesting forms in which we find manganese, one of them being these manganese oxide concretions from the famous Hell Creek formation in South Dakota. Manganese nodules have also been found on the floors of the oceans. The nodules contain about 24% manganese along with some smaller amounts of other metals. And then there's dendrites. They're these branching patterns that look like plant fossils, but it turns out they're not. They're films or coatings on the surface of rocks that are made of manganese. And I just did a full video on dendrites, so if you're curious to learn more about those and where you can find them, then check out the video here at Let's Go Geo on dendrites. And speaking of cool specimens, how about this blue fossil wood? It's from the Blue Forest in Wyoming. This is Eocene-aged fossil wood that is filled with chalcedony with a blue hue, and that hue comes from the traces of copper, titanium, iron, and manganese. Paleosols are ancient soils frozen in time. Red hues come from iron oxide, and the darker blackish hues come from manganese that was fixed by plants. Thick red layers sitting horizontally against these massive towers of hexagonal basalt columns are a common sight in eastern Oregon and Washington, a great place to observe rocks like basalts that are full of iron, magnesium, and, and another manganese. interesting place in the U.S. to observe paleosols is the Badlands, and Badlands are just a feature not just a place, but the Badlands, as in the Badlands National Park of South Dakota, have some very interesting paleosols of lots of different colors. So what do plants do with manganese? Well, manganese is actually really important to plant development. Manganese deficiencies will impact the conversion of sunlight to plant energy or the process of photosynthesis. For example, an enzyme responsible for converting water molecules to oxygen during the photosynthesis process uses manganese. This results in slow growth rates, poor development, and a low tolerance to stress. Manganese deficiencies are associated with alkaline soils and cold, damp environments. But it's not just plants. Manganese is an essential element in all known living organisms. Many types of enzymes will contain manganese. The average human body contains about 12 milligrams of manganese. We hear a lot about calcium and vitamin D for strong bones, mostly from the marketing of products like milk. But did you know that manganese is actually important for healthy bones? Bones become spongier if we are deficient in manganese. It's also important for our use of vitamin B1. Yeah, I know it sounds weird if this is the first time you've thought about it, but we do need to consume metals, manganese being one of them. Two other interesting ones include calcium, it's in the metal category, and copper that we need trace amounts of. I'll talk more about this in future videos. But just remember, when you sit down to that handful of nuts, or that whole grain cereal, or even green parsley, you're doing your body good. So aside from munching manganese, we humans also employ manganese in a wide range of industrial and societal applications. Manganese is too brittle to be much of a use as just a pure metal, so it tends to be used as an alloy in processes for metals like steel. Steel actually contains about 1% manganese. Some forms of steel even contain as high as 13% manganese, and these forms tend to be extremely strong and used in applications such as railway tracks, safes, rifle barrels, and prison bars. Did you enjoy a can of Coke today? You can thank manganese. 
Drink cans are also made of an alloy of aluminum and manganese. It helps the cans resist corrosion. And with aluminum and other metals, it can form some magnetic alloys. Manganese is used in the rubber, glass, and ceramics industries. And as a fungicide, some soils are naturally low in manganese, and increasingly soils are nutrient deficient. And so we add fertilizer to these soils. Manganese is also often given to livestock as a food supplement. Mining for manganese has been historically heavy in places like China, Africa, and Australia. But it's also found in the southwest U.S., where demand for manganese is predicted to skyrocket. And that's all due to the EV industry. So we'll probably see a lot more mining of manganese in places like Arizona in the coming years. As with most mining, especially that of metals, mining of manganese is not without its environmental problems. High levels of exposure are harmful to aquatic life, plant life, and recent studies such as this one published in Environmental Chemistry and Ecotoxicology even labels it a neurotoxin, linking it to diseases such as Parkinson's disease. If you want to learn more about rocks, minerals, crystals, mining, and many of the topics that we've explored today, then just hit subscribe and join me on the next adventure here at Let's Go Geo.